An SWR meter is a very essential device that plays key role in telecommunication and radio engineering. SWR stands for standing waves ratio and it is a calibration tool used to measure the standing wave ratio of a radio transceiver such as HF or VHF, UHF and etc. The standing wave ratio is exactly what its name describes. It's a ratio based on how much power can be delivered to your antenna versus the amount of power that is reflected by your antenna back down the coaxial cable to your radio. The finest way to understand SWR is by example. In the typical radio station setup, a transmitter is connected to a feed line, which is then connected to the antenna. When we key the radio and press and hold the transmitter button on the radio's microphone, it develops a radio frequency on the transmission line input. This wave travels down the feed line to the antenna, at the other end, and is called the forward wave. In some cases, part of the wave is reflected at the antenna and propagates back down the line in the reverse direction, toward the transmitter, and SWR is used to check if transmitted power from the radio is traveling properly through the antenna to the atmosphere or not. A perfectly performing antenna would turn all the of wattage reaching it, into signal, and you would have no reflected energy, going back down your coax. But a poor performing antenna system, such as a poorly tuned antenna, or any antenna of the wrong length, or badly grounded or faulty coax, or any number of other things, could cause a bad SWR reading, which results to significantly reduced range of transmit and receive signals, and potential damage to the internal parts of the transceiver. Display Panel A display panel contains two needles and two graduated scales. The first scale, which is on the left side, shows the transmitted power from the transceiver to the antenna, and printed forward. The second scale at the right side indicates the returned power from the antenna to the radio and labeled, reflected. The crossing section between both needles provides a reading value of the standing wave ratio of the installation. The reading must be done on the central scale in red lines. SWR meter is marked between an infinity and zero. Range switch. This switch is used to select the suitable reading scale depending on the power of the radio transceiver. A range switch has three positions. Down, for powers below 15 watts, such as an handset radio. Middle, for powers between 15 and 150 watts like, base radio transceiver. Up, for powers over 150 watts, such as an HF radio transceiver. Selector switch. This switch is used to select character of the measurement. Average, shows the average power. PEP, indicates the peak envelope power. Transmission and antenna ports. These ports that are female coaxial connectors and located on the back of the SWR meter or on the sides. Antenna port, the coaxial cable that descends from the antenna will connect to this port. This port is usually labeled with ANT, or output. Transmitter port, the coaxial cable that comes from the transmitter will connect to this port, and marked with, TR, or input or XMIT. Front panel power connector. This connector is usually located in the back side of the SWR meter and provides 13.8 volt power, to light the front panel. But an SWR will be still functional without using this power connector, as it is only for lightening the front panel. The connections and cabling are very simple. On the back of the SWR meter, you will find two female coaxial connectors or port, ANT and TR. You just need to connect the antenna cable to the ANT connector and the transceiver cable to the TR connector, using the coaxial cable. 
insert the prong of the coaxial cable into the hole at the center of the port, then rotate the barrel head clockwise until it's cinched down firmly. Now your SWR meter is ready to be used. SWR meter adjustment. If you notice that when there is no transmission, the needles of the SWR meter are not on the minimum value, zero, on each scale, you can adjust the position of each needle so that they face their zero value. To do this, adjust the position of each needle by turning the plastic screws on the front face of the SWR meter, there is one screw per needle. Testing a connection with an SWR meter. To run a test, just connect your radio's coaxial and antenna cables to the indicated ports on the meter. Take in mind that SWR meter always stands between the radio transmitter and the antenna. In order to have any result, double check that both leads are configured for the correct ports before you continue. If they are not, the readings you get back will be skewed and unhelpful. After setting up the SWR meter for calibration, now it's time to activate the radio transmitter. To do this, simply power on the transmitter. Try to send a voice message by pressing the transmitter button for a couple of seconds and do not release the transmitter button until you've made a note of the SWR value because the reading will disappear as soon as we release the button. By doing this, you'll get some reading values in SWR meter that actually indicate the strength of the signal being broadcasted. These values described as below. A reading of 1-1.5. If the produced value is between 1 to 1.5, so congratulation to you, as it indicates optimal signal strength, and as long as the number you see is below 2, it means that your radio and antenna are calibrated properly. A reading of 2 to 3, when we get this value it means that signal strength is not optimal, but still acceptable to continue the radio transmission. And to get the optimized result may you make some adjustments to your radio or antenna, as needed. A reading of 3 or above, if you get back an SWR value greater than 3, it means that your antenna might be the wrong length for your radio, or that there's a defect within the transmitter itself, or there is some issue with the installation such as cabling, connectors, and etc. So immediately, stop using the radio and turn it off before your equipment will be damaged.